London based. Jamaican baseline. Deadly. This is Deadly. Thanks. Nina, okay, welcome back to Deadly. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Always good to see you. Yeah, man, for real. So you are here in London because you recently headlined City Splash Festival. Mm -hmm. Shelled the place down, <laughs> as always. How yeah. was it being back on stage after so long? Yo, it was, it was an amazing thing, you know, to see so much people. Yeah. It was, at first I was like, damn, this is a lot of people. And then I saw some kids at the front and I was just like, wow, this is, this is, I need, I, I miss stage, I miss live music, I miss the energy and everything, so it was lovely. Yeah, and it must be weird because you released a project in the pandemic and then never got to perform it to anybody. For sure. Yeah, so it was, it was a, I was a bit, I was a bit nervous to be honest because I'm like, I know I have fans here and I know people support the music. I know people are aware of my music through even working with Protégé. But what I got on Sunday, I was like, okay, people are really ready. <laughs> to, to, they're ready, they're ready. So they were yeah, loving it, was, it. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was lit. I feel like the anxiety levels would have been quite high though, because you're A, first show back in a while. Yeah. B, in a pandemic and you're going to a country. Yeah. And it's pretty high risk compared yeah, to Jamaica. for sure, for sure. And also your headlining. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of... Alongside Beanie Man. Beanie who's Man. Like one of the greatest um, uh, performers. Yeah, the anxiety level did definitely up. I remember walking to the stage and I just, I had to be boring through people to get through and I like, yeah, man, it's definitely a catch corona, <laughs> you know? But I forget, I forget about all of that as soon as I heard the crowd and the music roll off and everybody was so excited to see me. I felt really proud of myself. Mm. I mean, I felt proud watching you from in the crowd. Mm, like, Thank you. The way you just commanded <laughs> that stage, there was no sense of nervousness or anxiety. Yeah. You just owned it yeah. and like bounced along. And there was a moment, by the way, when you literally Squat, you like squat jumped yeah. across the stage. It was yeah. like 20 squat jumps. I was like, how is she still going? Like, <laughs> like yeah, frog yeah. jumping across. <laughs> Yo, you know, since the pandemic and even before, but I've been taking fitness really, really seriously because yeah. I'm like, yo, when I get back out there, when I begin to perform, when I begin to tour, I want to give people something that you know, they might not see as often anymore because I watch a lot of old school performers. Beanie Man, Bounty Killer, Lady Saw, Spice, and it's like, you know, they are, it's always something to look forward to um, from their show. Like if I go to a Beanie or Bounty Killer show, I know me I expect some theatrics on stage. They're going to say some funny stuff. Their outfits are going to be looking amazing. So it's like, I'm very old school. So for me, it's like, I need to ensure that when, the peop when people pay their money to come see Leela Ike, you can listen to Second Chance at your house for however long. I can come and sing it live, you know, but what's going to encourage people to want to see me continuously? Like, I have to go to her show. I have to show them, say, yo, this girl really working on her craft, you know, she really loves what she's doing. And to be honest, I might not even premeditated. I, I knew I was going to go out there and give a lot of energy. But even when I began to squat, I was like, you better not drop. You better continue on the party. You better be able to go up and come back down. How the thighs the yeah. next day. Yeah, man, definitely. <laughs> Had to take a little, little. they call it Epsom salt bath. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was, it was fun. When I look back at your career so far, which granted hasn't even been that long, but yeah. when you look at the progression, it's, it's a madness to see like from even like 2017 yeah. when you were performing and I feel lucky enough to have caught you back then yeah. to now and looking at your success rate as well. It's just the trajectory's yeah, just gone up blessing. quick. Does it feel like that for you? Like, do you feel like everything's just sort of gone catapulting? Um, not really, because I, I, I know exactly where all of this is coming from, you know. Before yeah. anybody, when you guys met me in 2017, I was just about to release my very first single. Just, you know, met up with Protégé and began working on actually being a professional artist. But before that, you know, I realized I've been working on my craft for so long. Like, since I was going to school, I'm always at home singing, I'm always pretending as if I'm performing on a show. When I moved from the country to Kingston, there wasn't any session that was happening that I wouldn't be there. Like I'd be going to school, then work, then leaving from work, I'd be at 
whatever sessions happening around Kingston, even if it's a karaoke. So I've been working on it, but as it relates to being in the, in the limelight and being a part of the industry, it definitely went up sometimes. Like as I begin to gain success and gain recognition, it's, I'm taken aback sometimes, but I know that this is what really happens when you put in all that work. And especially when you have a great team, like I remember Protégé meeting him and him saying, all right, when I first wrote Biggest Fan, I met up with him at his um, home studio in Kingston. First time meeting him, I'm like, boy, I'm going to play some rhythm and make sure I say, come through. This is Protégé, <laughs> you know, and that's how I came up with Biggest Fan. And Gotti Gotti, and I remember him saying to me, like, Biggest Fan's gonna be your first single, let's work on that, and going to the studio and recording it and putting it out, and he's like, all right, let's just use this entire year to promote this song, like, he had it all together. I'm just there like, yo, what's this man talking about? <laughs> like, he saw all of this, he's like, you know, in, in, in five years max, you're gonna be one of the, the biggest artists in Jamaica. And I'd see things happening and, and see it happening in the time that he'd say it. And I'm like, you know, it just made me gain so much respect for him and respect for patiently put in the work and trust the mm. process and just watch it all happen. And you can tell that he's just so proud yeah, when he really looks at you. It's so nice to see. Yeah, but he's like a, like a big brother yeah. kind of energy, you know? For sure, for sure. And so we're here in London now. I feel yeah. like you fit in so well. <laughs> like, I just yeah. feel like you live here. Yeah, man, we love London still. It's, I really like it here. You know, a lot of our culture is embedded here in London because a lot of Jamaicans move here a long time ago. So when I come here, I mean, everywhere I've gone, I've seen, I've heard a Jamaican. So I always feel like I fit in here. Mm. Sure. And you like the music scene as well. Yeah, like man, love the music scene. Like, since I came in 2017, I discovered a lot of grime artists. I didn't know Nadia Rose before that. Yeah. I didn't know Dave. I didn't know Jay Huss. And I just remember going back to Jamaica after, and all I was listening is grime. Mm. Gigs. I was finding all of these people, and I'm like, yo, this, this is hard. Yeah. And you know, naturally, like whatever you listen to somehow seeps its way into your sound and your vibe and energy. So, for sure. Yeah. And I, I'm just waiting for that UK collab now because I feel yeah. like it's just on the cusp. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Do you know yeah, who it's going to be yet or are you still kind no, of... No, but I, I definitely love to do a song with Dave. I yeah. think I really love his mindset, his writing is... It moves me, you know, it's not just about, oh, I'm the coldest artist, I'm the dopest, I have all these bars. It's words, sound and power where you can relate to, you know? Yeah, and he's so. not about that, like, toxic masculinity. No, he's, like, man, so he's, honest, yes, like, that's the thing. Very, very, very honest music. I really love Nadia, too, mm. you know, so. I you feel like know. you and Little Sims would be Oh, so wow, I, I completely well. forgot about Little Sims. Okay. She's, she's crazy, she's yeah. crazy. But yeah, man, all of them things there, I could definitely have them. All in good time. All in, <laughs> all good, in good time. time. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about your new music. Super yeah. exciting. You recently dropped Batty Rider Shorts. Yeah. So tell us about the message behind this and why it was important for you to write this song. Yeah, so the message behind Batty Rider Shorts is just kind of paying more attention to young people, you know, paying attention to their cries, you know, stuff that they want to talk about. It's just really being responsible with youths as parents, as adults, as even just onlookers, you know? Because I remember growing up and there wasn't anything I could do on the road that, was, that I wasn't supposed to do, and I would reach home before it got back to my grandmother and my mom. And I know that I'd be in big trouble. And that kind of helped to keep me and my siblings in, in line. So I find that nowadays, you know, you can see it happening in the streets. Like a lot of pe young people just really and truly, they're just doing what they want because in my opinion, they don't necessarily have that, you know, taking a village to raise a child energy happening right now. And then because of that, you have a lot of abuse, domestic violence happening, you know, with the youth then, a lot of rape, especially right now in Corona, mm. with kids being at home, you know, there are studies that are showing that kids are getting molested and all of that more often these days and then from a personal perspective it's something i observed within my community there's a little girl that you know i used to just kind of mentor her you know i was her mentor and she really looked up to me and i left went to kingston to pursue my career and stuff and went back home and 
I realized she was with child, you know? She's young, she's probably like 14 or something like that. So it moved me to the point of writing that song. And that was like four years ago. And you know, the other day I heard of a situation which a lot of people knew about in Jamaica where a young girl was basically raped and murdered by this man who supposedly was, you know, giving her rides to work um, in the mornings. And it, it, I got so depressed, like that mashed me up for like two weeks. I wasn't eating or sleeping. I don't know why, to the point where I had to reach out to her family because I'm like, I don't know why this is affecting me so deeply. Mm. So I was like, you know, it's a perfect time to release this song. And so that's how Batty Rider Shots is out now. Mm. Sure. Well, it's a beautiful song and like yeah. that's what I rate about you is that you're not scared to just touch on mm -hmm. important topics. Do you feel like a, a responsibility to make yeah. message music? Because yeah, not everyone's doing that at your age, do you know For what I mean? For sure. Because it's like when I think about how I even got the passion of being into music, not even necessarily being an artist, but just being in love with music, it's because I can remember being as young as a 10 year old and hearing Garnet Silk and hearing Queen Africa and just being like, whoa, like, I, I don't have a 100% understanding, maybe on a, the spiritual level yet, what they're talking about, but it really connected to me. You know, and I just, I always think, what if that wasn't the kind of music my mom had me exposed to? You know, I'm listening to Celine Dion, you know, Lauren Hill. Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Sisla Kalonji, Bojo Banton, Marcia Griffiths, Tootsant, like all of these powerful, high vibrational music. So I'm like, if I wasn't listening to that, I'd be making a completely different kind of music. Cause it's sounds, it's everything that you experience that you put together when you are creating. So it's like, if I wasn't exposed to that, more than likely I feel I wouldn't be so responsible in my music. I'd just be singing about whatever come to mind. And mind you, people are allowed to express themselves however, but I guess for me having a niece, a four-year-old niece, and having younger sisters who I want to reach, especially separate and apart from the mass, it's like I want to ensure that, yo, I'm really saying things that make sense. I can't be driving around with my mom and my niece and I can't have to be turning down her. It just doesn't yeah. make any sense. I hear that, yeah, respect yeah. for that. And I imagine during lockdown, probably got quite, well, I don't know, were you one of yeah. the artists that sort of just <laughs> took that time to chill or did you really like write and record um, loads of music? Yeah, I mean, it was in lockdown that I finished most of my, uh, my first project. And I definitely used the time, I, I started playing my guitar more. It was, it was waves, I have waves of just being, yo, got to put in that work, yo, when Corona done, you need to be ready. And then I had waves of just not wanting to get out of bed, just want to binge watch Netflix, yeah. eat a lot of snacks, yeah. get fat. Then I had another <laughs> wave of, yo, I got to work this fat off in the gym. <laughs> so it was, it was wave, but definitely it has awarded me a lot of time to think, a lot of time to analyze where I'm at in my career, a lot of time to really just prepare for when I have really low moments. It, you give, you, I get more time to sit with myself because being on the road all the time, you don't get to tap into what you're feeling for real, right? So with being at home and not having anywhere to go, you have to sit with that and deal with it. So yeah, there, there are a lot of positives that came out of it for me. Yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So have you, you've obviously put out the experience it's done incredibly well. Thank you. We're now, at the stage where we're potentially talking about a debut album. Do yeah, we for sure. For sure. And Have you started working on it? Yeah, man, for sure. Jeez. I'm actually going back home now to finish up some recordings. I have like some exciting collaborations on it that I'm very excited about. Okay. Um, Wait, so some... what level are we at now? Like how, how much of it have you actually done? Um, you see, with, you see, because it's like, touch and go with music. I'll have a song that I'm sure that's gonna be on the album. And then I might go home and come up with another song that is, whoa, this is sick. Maybe not that one and this one. So I can't say for sure, mm. but I'm very confident in the music that we're making. And you know, I'm, I'm very excited to release that album and just see what it does in the world. So you say you've got cool features on there. I know mm. you're not gonna be able to tell me <laughs> no. who they are. But no. are we talking like international? Are we talking? Yeah. yeah. 
international okay. dope dope music okay yeah. <laughs> and what sort of vibe is this album going to be i think the cool thing about you is that you're not you don't really fit into a particular yeah. genre you mm. do your own thing there's lots of different influences in there is that going to continue on with this, this album? yeah man for sure i just want to show a bit more growth as it relates to my thought process things i think about things i open up about you know just more honest and more open so yeah just okay. big woman thing you know yeah yeah <laughs> sick well i saw a picture of you uh in the studio with her mm -hmm. Can you, can you tell us about that? What was that experience like? That How was, was she? dope. Like, she's one of my favorite um, R&B soul artists right now. And they actually reached out because she's working on a project and she wanted me to help with it. So wow. I was like, this is crazy. And just getting the opportunity to watch her work, it's definitely one of the greatest things I've experienced in my career. She's exceptional. How come? Like, what, what makes it? Her so writing. First of all, like her writing, I just feel for, I think she's what, 22 or 20, she just oh, turned. I forget that. I yeah, she's, she's very young, younger. right? Mm. But the way how she expresses herself, it's like, she just reminds me a lot of Lauren Hill. Mm. You know, I can see like a young Lauren Hill um, <laughs> in her. And also just her work ethic. Like I'd go to the studio from like 11 in the morning and we wouldn't be leaving sometimes until one in the night, in the, in the, in the next morning. Yeah. And she just keep going, like, finish her song, it's like, all right, let's, let's hear something else, you know? And just her knowledge of music, you know, she understands the theory of music. She plays almost all instruments. So it's like, it's something beautiful to experience and to be inspired by. Like, I, when I first went and came back home, I'm like, yo, gotta learn these chords, girl, <laughs> you know? And it's just a, it's just mind blowing, man. I like your selection of artists that you work with. You also worked with Skinny yeah. Bang recently on the Zyra yeah, yeah, remix. Yeah. Yo, the cool thing about that is also he is notoriously only working with people that he thinks is like hard. Like yeah. he doesn't just work with anybody. Yeah. So how did that come about, first of all? And and what what was he actually like to work with? I'm very intrigued by him. You know, I met him before I knew who he was. I remember I went to a show at a university in Jamaica. I was just supporting. I think Seven I was on the show, and I went there to watch her. And he was also on it, but I didn't know who he was. Right. So Seven I finished performing. They're shutting off the sh the show, and everybody's walking out. And I just kept hearing somebody saying. Yo, Layla, yo, Layla, and I'm like, yo, who the hell is this calling out my name like that, right? But I turn around and I say, yeah, man, bless up, and he caught up to me and I said, yo, mama, you know, say me, I go shell the world, though. I don't know who this guy is, right? So I'm just there, like, yeah, all right, then. From you say so, you know, because I'm, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> Couple days later, you know, the the brick pan brick tune was a big tune in Jamaica at that point, but I didn't know who sang it or anything. And so I found out it was this guy named Skilly Bang and I remember that's what they were calling him. So I went and I actually went, I, you know, like me go check, you know, my messages, you see. And he actually did reach out, you know, from long time, like commenting on my stuff and thing. And so I messaged him and I'm like, yo, this is so cool. And then I actually went and looked for, to see if he had any other music out. Cause for me, it's like, yeah, you can have a bad tune, but I want to see what really it is that, you know, you're medzin as an artist. And that's when I found the, the East Side mixtape. And I kid mm. you not, for a whole month or two, that was all I was listening to in my car. I'm like, this guy's style is crazy. And I just remember telling him that, yo, I think you're so dope and whatever. And he must say, yeah, man. And he, we exchanged numbers and he'd always hit me up. And I remember him asking me if Lauren Hill is one of my inspirations. And I said, yeah, man, and he's like, yeah, because you remind me so much of her. He said his dad always played Lauryn Hill music, and every time he hears Second Chance, that's what he thinks about. And he's always saying, yo, nobody listen too much, I'm a gun tune them in the car. You know why your head get too hot? So anywho, I put out my project, and Thy Will was out, and um, I remember talking to Protégé, and I'm like, yo, I feel like for the video we should do a remix, because I didn't put out a video for it yet. And so I was like, if I'm going to do a remix, though, I wanted to be with an artist that people wouldn't expect to be on a song like that. 
yeah. right? And I just remember saying, yo, I think Skilly Ben could pull it off because I just think his talent, like he can do whatever. He's not just the artist that I'd sing about guns or whatever. I really mm. think he's actually a very smart writer, you know, an artist. And so I messaged him and I said, yo, you da jump on thy wheel? And him said, send me the rhythm. And like I was waiting on it for a while and I just remember saying to Protege, yo, if the man come on the rhythm with no crocodile teeth business, <laughs> but now I put out it, right? When he sent me back, I think it was like two weeks or so later, just yeah. randomly, you just see a brrrr coming on my message and he sent me the, 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 the voice, the, the recording of his part. And I was like, I was so freaking blown away. Like his interpretation of the song, the melodies, the style he incorporated is like, we're like, yo, we have to do a whole new mix of the track. Yeah. So if you realize that I will let I put out first and the one with him, we changed the rhythm a little bit mm -hmm. to like a more dancehall mix. And I was like, yo, I have to come back. Like I have to do a back and forth thing with him. Yeah. Cause if I put this out, like the man completely take over my song. <laughs> I have to drop in a little thing here and there, but. And then working with him for the video, he was on time. But a whole bunch of people pulled up when he came and he was so patient because we were running behind and everything. And he sat, he was so patient. He came, he's like, Leela, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And like, I'm explaining to him what we're going to be doing. One of the most easiest brother for work with. Mm. So chill, so chill, so down to earth. Like, just come to get the work done. No hype, nothing. Right, and obviously I feel he's at a bigger level than me as it relates to numbers and everything, right? But he didn't come and operate like, yeah, me, he's a bigger yeah, artist than you. It was just like, yo, we have this dope song together, let's get the work done. And I'm just very proud of the, the, the character that he is. I feel a lot more of them dancehall artists I should really operate in that regard. Mm, that's you know? so nice to hear. It's so nice to hear when artists that you rate yeah, are man. actually like good people yeah, man, and they're professional. Me. And I really, I was, I was taken aback because I'm like, boy, I'm, I'm there losing my shit on the shoot because I'm like, yo, everything out of walk. It was just a mess. But he was just like, even him at the time was like, Lee, like, think good man, don't worry yourself. Calm down, mama. And he was just there. <laughs> Yeah, very, 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 very good person. Yeah. I really rate him. Thick. Well, listen, before we let you go, um, yeah. I feel like as an avid Clarks wearer, I need to just mention, I don't know if these, these are in the shot. What is it that you love about Clarks? Because you're always rocking like the freshest pair. Yeah. Always. <laughs> you know, so ever since I was growing up, I just remember like all of my elder them in the community, Clarks was their go-to shoes and them would have cherish it, like cleaning it all the time, ensuring that it's well kept. And it's a particular kind of man I wear them clocks, yeah, like dignitary. You don't know, like real general them. Yeah. And I always found it so cool, just how much them really invest them energy in keeping these particular shoes clean. And then as I grow older, you know, me go high school now, cartel bus, the song with, with the clocks, and it was a whole thing. And my mother never ever like, she not spend her money buying no clocks in my work at school. <laughs> and if we wear sketches or something, yeah. right? So when I got older, me could have stopped by my own shoes and me I say, yeah. And from high school, I want to wear clocks, you know. What did you go for? Wallabies? No, you know, some of them didn't really like the desert clocks, mm. them though. I really love desert. Yeah. So I used to wear a lot of clocks and like when I dip on my, I don't know, when I wear a clocks to go and perform, it just make me feel invincible, like nobody has or nobody than me right now. Yeah. And generally I feel like as a woman, somebody see a woman pull up in her clocks, mm. and just know, say, no, so I not really mess with that lady there. It's legit. But now I go pick fear about <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it just gives a certain level of just invincibility when I read about it. And the designs, it's just neat. I really yeah, like it. It's I clean. Hear that. I hear that. You know, yeah. always a pleasure. Of course, so you can you. thanks so much. And I'm excited for this album. Yeah, so man, excited. you're gonna love it, man. You're Jeez. gonna love it. <laughs> Deadly. Thanks.